it is communion Sunday and we don't want to uh, belabor you too long uh, but uh, we will be having our communion uh, service uh, ceremony um, and uh, right after service amen amen, amen. now John, we're going to go back to that fourth chapter. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lift up that tenth verse to lead us into our message because the story has already been read in your hearing earlier. Amen? And that tenth verse of that fourth chapter of the Gospel of John reads like this. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Amen. Living water. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we ask the Lord for the wrong thing. <laughs> Amen. 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 Listen, I just want to preach this morning. I'm going to expand it a little bit. Uh, living water don't come in no bottle. Amen. 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 Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask you right now to continue to dwell in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. Move among us, Lord, and have thine own way. I ask you, Lord, to open the hearts and minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the word that you have deposited into the very unworthy spirit of your servant. Amen? Amen. I ask, Lord, that you would furthermore take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that they might not see me, but Christ in me. Bless somebody's soul, cleanse, and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 Living water don't come in no bottle. Amen? <coughs> did, 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 did you ever, I mean, when you were younger, I'm talking about some of us that have been around for a while, did, I, I mean, when back then, we paid for a lot of things, but did you ever imagine that we would be running around here paying for water? I, 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 I mean, except like out in Arizona or... Uh, Nevada or somewhere back in the day nobody paid for water they, they they had to truck it in to certain places and and there would be a certain fee like you pay for a maintenance fee in one of these uh, 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 upper scale uh, uh, developments or something like that and, and you, you know you'd pay uh, to, to for drinking water but most people uh, uh, didn't pay for water not in the case of per drink anyway amen I mean, we pay our quarterly water bill and, and sewer bill is added in there too and it's just a few dollars. Amen? Amen. But, 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 but rarely did you run into someone that wouldn't give you a glass of water. Amen. They might not give you a drink if they had put a little red powder and a little sugar in there and stirred it up. They might not give you their Kool-Aid. Amen? <laughs> but very few people would say, no, nah, I can't give you a glass of water. Amen? Right. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember when, when we used to stop at the service station. And two things you could always depend on at the service station. And that was free air mm -hmm. and free water. Amen? Mm -hmm. yep. Now, you can't get either. Nope. That's Amen? Right. Sure you can't get no free water. And, and, and you, you got to pay 50 cents. Somebody know what I'm talking about. If you didn't have no money, if you didn't have no money, you could walk in any diner, anywhere around, sit down at the counter, and say, let me get a glass of water. Mm -hmm. They give you a glass of water, no problem. I mean, I mean, people, they, you know, when I, was, when, when, when I was coming up, and even now, people, you get water from a lot of different places, right? I mean, we would drink water at school, out in the fountain. And you would drink water over here, you know, when you when you were at the mall, they had a fountain, you know. Uh, uh, there were public drinking spots. 
and 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 uh, even though you might be prohibited from drinking the water from certain fountains because you wasn't the right color. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It was still free. Even though you couldn't drink. It. Now, sometimes you just go and if you wanted to drink the water, you just stop through and turn the faucet and oh, cup your hands and get some water. No problem, right? right. Nobody even thought about it. The, the hydrant. They, they turn on the hydrant in the summertime down here in, on Eisenhower. You know, I used to live in the projects back then, kid. And, 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 and there would be free water just sprouting out. And we'd take, <laughs> we'd take popsicle sticks and put in there and race them. And, and you get you, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. you, you know, that's what you did, you know. Uh -huh. Water was free. It wasn't restricted. Amen. Right. You know, if you wanted some water, you go and grab the holes and get you a drink of water. Somebody watering their lawn or whatever, they let you get the holes and, and get a sip. Am I right? Now, all of a sudden, all this done switched, and one of the fastest growing industries in America right now is selling water. How about that? I mean, people have actually built their fortunes selling water. I mean, we're addicted to bottled water. And, 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 and we buy a bottle of water, even though most of the water in the United States is just as clean as the bottled water. Somebody through advertising and, and, and manipulation of the message has convinced us that it's better to drink my water for a dollar twenty-five than it is to get a cup of water out of the faucet and they're basically identical. In America, they report that four billion dollars a year is spent on bottled water. I know you paid your part. Amen. <laughs> You put your part in there. And we do this even though we don't have no guarantee that that water in that plastic bottle is any purer than what you can get right out your sink. In some cases, there's no difference at all. I mean, I mean, we would like to believe, because we're paying for it, that the water in the bottle has been drawn from some magical spring up in the mountain like the picture on the bottle. You know what I mean? We would like to believe that it flow, it bubbled up from the earth and was purified and ran down on pristine rocks. And there were some people down there catching our bottle of water in the bottle. But the truth is, the majority of bottled water is just tap water. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Santi puts it right on its label and nobody even cares to read it. Right on the back of the label it says in small print, water obtained from public water source. <laughs> now what do you think a public water source is? We know it better by the name faucet. It's a faucet that the water works. But we will pay a dollar and twenty. Coca Cola got us fooled. They make us think we got something special because they put that little that little blue tag on it, and they put the Star Wars R two D two and three C three P O. They really got us now. We really think we got something. Amen. Yeah. And it's the same water that you get out of your tap at home. All they did was they filtered it. You, you can put a filter on you. You sure can, brother. Yeah, you sure can. I, I'm just saying, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. In 2011, uh, Living Waters for the World, they had this mission. It was a Presbyterian church, and they had this mission that they wanted to bring water to some of, of these uh, underprivileged and underserved places in the world. You know, one of the, the even though we in America, we enjoy free, clean water, which we don't want to drink. We got so much money, we'd rather pay for water. That's the same water, but it's, you know, it's got a like, nice pretty bottle that they put it in, you know. We'd rather pay for it. People, other people in the world, one of the, the rarest and, and, and most sought after commodities is clean water. They don't have clean water. Their water is diseased and, and, and you know, they don't have any choice but to, to drink it. They try to boil it. They try to do what they can, but, you know, purification is, is, 
of water that is heavily contaminated is a, is, is a very complicated process. Amen? And most of them don't have the resources to afford the equipment. But this, uh, this, this, this ministry, Living Waters for the World, they, they went to Cuba and they installed this water purification system. It's very expensive water purification system in this church. And as soon as they got that system in, the people in the community, in the community started saying, The church has living water! The church has living water! And they all rushed to get to the church to get water. Now they give out over 2,500 gallons of water every hour. Wow. And one resident say, it never runs out. It's just like Jesus. It never runs out. And in that church, people came for the water, but they also came for some spiritual water. Amen? Mm -hmm. They sought Jesus because they knew that like that water, he never runs out either. Amen. And I don't know about you, but but I'm trying to get some living water. I'm not worried about no uh, DeSanti and, and, and Coca-Cola company selling water and all that kind of stuff. See, because the living water that I want, you can't sell it. You can't all bottle right. it. You can't, you can't contain it. Amen? Amen. The water I, I'm talking about is tapped from the fountain of Almighty God. Amen. And it has everything I need through grace. To change whatever situation that I am currently struggling with in my life. Does somebody know what I'm talking about? Yes, amen, amen. Talk about it. All right, the text that we're talking about today, let's just look at that. Jesus uh, it meets this woman at uh, this well, and this well is reputed to be Jacob's well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jacob, one of the prophets, you know, uh, 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 one, excuse me, one of the patriarchs of the Jewish faith. Amen. And Jesus came to Samaria, and he broke through several barriers to bring the message of salvation to this woman that was sitting at the well. He went through racial barriers. He went through gender barriers. and He went through uh, 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 Jewish legal bar barriers, the whole thing. And see, see, Jewish women in the Middle East were kind of similar to what you see how they're being treated even today. They... Women over there were considered second-class citizens. See, some of y'all don't 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 appreciate the freedoms that you have here. Amen. Uh, you 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 don't appreciate the freedom. You couldn't talk to anybody as a woman in the Middle East. You definitely couldn't talk to a man in public, any public place. The only place that you could talk to a man would be at home. And you better be doggone sure that you say the right thing when you're there, because if you don't. Your husband can beat you legally. Y'all getting quiet on me now. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, you couldn't show your, you couldn't you 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 couldn't show any any part of your body like like women do today. They just you know they put on whatever they put on. They put it on and and look like they they pump it up to make it as tight as it can be. Amen. Or suck all the air out of it. Amen. And just walk around and then get mad because you look at them. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying today. <laughs> uh, uh, women, you couldn't do that. You have to be very careful. And, and, and Jesus went right up to this woman and engaged her in a conversation. And, and this was at a visible meeting place uh, in the community. This woman came at night because she couldn't come while the other women were at the well or while anybody else was at the well because they would have ridiculed her. Yes. And Jacob's well had a long standing taboo about this for uh, centuries that men don't talk to the women at the well. Yes. All right, all right. And besides that, you know, Jesus broke the morality rule at the well. See, this woman here was a woman that was marked with low morals. Y'all know what I'm talking about, low morals? Do I have to explain that thing? Mm -hmm. In other words, the Bible says that she had been married five times. Mm -hmm. And I guess when nobody else would marry her, she just decided to live with a man. Mm -hmm. And that sixth man that she had wasn't her husband either. So by, by Jewish uh, standards, she was a harlot. Right. How many of us would be considered honest? If it, hmm. Oh, it don't talk about it. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I know you start thinking about that thing. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. 
priest and, and the devout folk in the city had no contact with her. They wouldn't touch her. They wouldn't bless her. She wasn't welcome in the synagogue. And she was an outcast. Amen? Amen. And Jesus came and he offered her this living water of salvation. Amen. Man, that was great. And an opportunity not only to have salvation, but to have everlasting life. The woman was so excited, she dropped her water pot and ran through the city talking about, come see a man that told me all the things I ever did. Is he not the Christ? The fact that she left the water pot is speaking to the excited state of mind that she had. That the Christ would speak to her and, and her leaving her water pot beside the, beside the well and going into the village talked about the fact that her thirst for the things of the world was not as great as her thirst for the things of God. Amen? Amen. She accepted that living water and Jesus raised her expectations of herself. You know, sometimes when people have talked about you and put you down for so long, you start believing it All right. yeah. yourself. Yeah. And that's why you ought to talk, uh, you ought to be careful how you talk to your children Amen. and how you talk to the young people in your life. Sometimes the things that you say can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Instead of saying you're just like your no good daddy. Maybe you should tell them that you are a mighty man of God. And you're going to do great things for the world. Amen? And put that into their mind. But her thirst for the things of the world was diminished. She didn't care about it anyway. Why do we get thirsty anyway? Uh, you know, uh, because sometimes it seems like it just come out of nowhere. Am I right? You just get thirsty. And, and, and thirst is basically a lack of water in your system. You know that we are basically made up of mostly water. Amen. And in order to keep us going, we have to replenish the water because we lose it through, through, through uh, evaporation, through our breathing, and through sweat, and, and all these different processes, right? Amen. And then when you receive living water, you get this, this living water to replenish you. Amen? Amen. And, and what happens is even with natural water, if you don't replenish it, your body becomes out of balance. And you begin to thirst. And it's the same thing with your spiritual life. If you're not constantly receiving living water, you become out of balance. Am I right? Amen. Some of y'all, y'all, y'all all right as long as you come into church every week. And you come to church on Wednesday, and, and you come to prayer on Thursday, but leave you for six months without no church. See what you... Amen, amen. They start turning back into the werewolf. Like when the sun come up, amen. Yeah, the, I mean, I mean, when the sun go down, the moon come out. Amen. Your claws start getting longer, and hair start to growing in weird places. You start changing back into what's on the inside. Start to come on the outside. You don't start look. You you start looking like that little fake church lady that you're trying to be. You start looking like that fake big deacon that you're trying to be, and you start looking like the animal sinner that you really are. That's when. That's when your living water start running out. Oh, Pastor Harris ain't around no more to keep an eye on me. And you start changing back. Amen? You know, the moment you get <clears throat> this living water is what they call an epiphany. An epiphany. That sounds like a great old spiritual word, don't it? Yeah. Seems like you ought to hear some angels singing or something when you hear that word. Uh, epiphany. Amen? Yep. But epiphany is really a very simple thing. Epiphany simply means that at this moment, I see it. I see it now. You know, I, I understand it now. I know Mama tried to explain it to me. I know daddy tried to explain it to me, but somehow I see it now. 
Well, that's when you get that living water. Mm -hmm. And once you finally see it, you like that woman at the well. Right. You ever seen somebody that's been down and dirty and doing the wrong thing for so long, and, and then they, they, they find Jesus, and everywhere they go, they got to tell somebody about oh. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, see, some of y'all, y'all been drinking this water all along, and, and, and you done got used to it, so you don't even talk about Jesus no more. You don't even let nobody know that you're a Christian. As a matter of fact, you don't want them to know, because then you got to explain why you're doing all that nasty stuff you're doing, and why you're talking nasty like you talk, and they start saying, you supposed to be. That's right. Go ahead and tell them. Y'all getting quiet on <laughs> That's when you receive that living water. You get that epiphany. Man, you feel good. Amen? Amen. And you want to tell people about Jesus. Mm -hmm. One thing I want you to understand today is that in order to live this thing, in order to really live this Christian life, you've got to have some living water. Amen? Amen. Amen. When Jesus met this woman at the well, he offered her some of this living water. And, and in essence, his, 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 this spirit, this living water, would uh, be the key to really living. You know, there's a lot of folk that are breathing, but they're not living. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're getting up and you're going to work. Every, I, I like it now, you know, You know, once they have one successful thing on TV, you know how they, they when they have success with one thing, they just keep making old stuff over and over and over again. Now all you see is zombies. Everybody got zombies now. <laughs> yeah, now they got zombies back in the 18th century. Your pride and prejudice zombies now. They done run out of future zombies to go after now. Now we got to go back in time and say there were zombies back there, you know, in, 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 in Cologne. England or, or something like that. Amen? Amen? But once they have success, they want to keep it going. But you know what? That is significant that we can identify with them that way because many of us are just zombies. Amen. We kind of look like we're alive until you get really close to us. And then you say, hey, that joke got an ear hanging on. <laughs> and you know, hey, 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 he got one eye hanging out. You know what I mean? You can't really tell zombies from far away, but when you get close to them, you see that they got scars all over here and, and that half of their body is gone. That's how we are. Oh, we look good as long as you see us from afar. But when you get close enough to us, you see we got this problem and we got that problem and, and this thing is wrong and that thing is wrong and we need some living water. Amen? We need it to live. But one thing I'm glad about is there's a constant stream. And it flows, the Bible says, from the throne of God. And anything that tries to live will soon die without water. Your marriage, <laughs> career, relationships, they all need living water. Nothing else will substitute Amen. for water. There, 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 there are a lot of people today that are just spiritually dehydrated. I'm talking about folk going to church every Sunday. They just spiritually dehydrate. Amen? You're trying to live without drinking any spiritual water. You know, they say that we need eight glasses of water a day to keep our system functioning right. Now, a lot of us, we substitute that with coffee and cold drinks and Johnny Walker Red and other wet substances, but if you don't have water, uh, you're going to learn that nothing will take its place. Right. Right. Likewise, a lot of you are substituting things for Christ. You're trying to substitute things for the living water to make you feel good. Uh, you found out that when you buy something and when you hear the ching-ching of that cash register that it makes you feel better about yourself. <laughs> so now you're going out buying stuff. Now you got stuff piled up everywhere that you never used, you never wore because you're trying to substitute it for Christ. Let me tell you something. A, a healthy spiritual life needs worship, Bible study, prayer, and most of all the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? If you're going to have that living water. Let me tell you something. When you break water down, it has certain components. 
And living water has certain components. Seven, to be exact. All right. You know, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, Charles Jones was the former senator of um, Louisiana. He wrote this this book called Seven Prayers and Seven Commands, and it talks about the seven things that you need when you encounter God. And, and according to his book, he says that when you, uh, 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 I'm sorry, certain things that you receive when you encounter, encounter God. And, and of course, he's seven anointings. I wrote them down. It says wisdom, vision, insight, foresight, knowledge, discernment, and understanding. And these seven things, he says, are the basis of your relationship with God. And there, uh, after that epiphany, they provide the evidence of whether you got the living water and a spirit-filled life. In other words, you know, you can act like something happened, but the evidence that something happened in your life is that you thirst for the things of God. If you say that you've been saved and you never want to come to church, then I would ask you that you would maybe reconsider your conclusion. And it is generally accepted that the human can live without air for about three minutes. And you won't have any internal damages, won't nothing happen to your brain, you might be a little blue in the face, but that's all. And then scientists say that you can live for about three hours in extreme cold. You know what, it says that we can survive for about three weeks with no food. Some of us got some extra fat stores. We'll probably last a couple weeks. <laughs> All right. All right. So don't ever get stranded on a desert island with a fat person and you a skinny person. They're going to make it. Amen. <laughs> and you ain't. But you can only last for about three days without water. Did you know that? Without a drink of water, you can only last for about three days. You just shrivel up and die. Your organs shrivel up and die. And that's the same way it is with your spiritual life. You can't last long without some living water. I don't care how strong of a Christian you believe yourself to be. And then, thirdly, I just want to tell you, living water don't come in no bottle. There, there, there's no shortcut. You can't just run down to uh, uh, to Sam's Club and buy you a case of living water. And that's all there is to it. You can't run over here to the corner store and, and grab one out the refrigerator. They're, they're quick, there's no quick bottles of living water laying around. You can't get them from the store and just sip them on your way to work. If you want living water on the way to work, then you're going to have to do something. You either got to put in a, 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 a DVD of the word, or you're going to have to get, get, get the word playing on your phone or do something, but you can't get it in a bottle. There's no ethos water. There's no Avion. There is no Aquafina. There's no Poland Spring. There's no Magic Mountain. There's no Deep River Rock. There's no Deer Park Spring Water. There's no Crystal Clear. There's no Eden Spring. There's no Nestle Pure Life that you can buy and gulp down and your salvation be intact. None of those brand names are going to save you. And that dollar and 25 cent, you can keep it in your pocket because you can't get living water from a bottle. Uh -huh. None of those brand names are like the water Jesus is talking about in his conversation with the woman at the well. Uh -huh. Living water comes right from Jesus. Jesus. The water represents our emptiness. And the living water shows him filling that emptiness up. Somebody ought to shout off of that right oh, there. <laughs> the water represents the lack of our spirit. And the living water represents Jesus showing up and inspiring us to keep on going. But you know what? There's something that's more important than water. And there might not be anything special about the water that you buy. But I guarantee you. That there's power in the blood. Yes. 
Right. You know, your need for water underscores our humanity. But the blood of Christ touches your humanity with the power of the divine. It was through the shedding of the blood that sins were forgiven. Right. Justification was secured. Uh, lost sinners were restored. And, and sinners were reconciled to God. It was through the blood of Christ that we got saved and were brought before God spotless and worthy for the kingdom. The water gives you the witness, but the blood does the saving. That's what John meant uh, when he said in, in 1 John 5 and 6, not by water only, but by water and the blood. <laughs> it means that you got to have the living water or the Spirit of God in your life uh, before you get the blood of Jesus Christ as well. Uh, it seems that only the ones that have the living water can go on to get the blood. I don't know about you, but I got the spirit one day, and then I got the blood, the living water, that's the pure water, you know, scientists think that pure water is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, that's why they call it H2O, in spiritual terms, living water is two parts healthy spiritual living and praise and worship and giving and one part obedience you got to worship God in spirit and in truth but then you got to be obedient to what the word says if you want to have living water you got to live right you got to pray right you got to praise right you got to give right and you got to be obedient to the commands of God. I wish I could get somebody that would agree with me on this thing. Anything short of that is contaminated water. You know whiskey got water in it. It's called fire water. But it take you to a place that might not be where God is. You know fruit drink got water in it. But it's got fruit juice mixed in it. And it might taste good. But it's not the fruit of the spirit. You know, five hour energy. It's got water. And it'll lift you up. For about five hours. But then you go crash down. And you got to get some sleep. But I know some living water. That never let me down. I never got tired. I never got slack. I heard somewhere that he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. There's some people that got dipped in water, but they still don't have the living water. There's some people that got dipped in water, but they still got Motel 6 keeping the light on for them. casino and the bingo house there's some people that got dipped in water but they only got the rock excuse me the only rock that they got with the water comes in little plastic bags and is sold by the gram there's a new life that come with living water if you've been dipped in the living water, you ought to walk different. You ought to talk different. You ought to be different. But the new life don't just come from the water, but you also got to have the blood from all over the world. I heard the cry go out. Is there a fountain? You know, in the middle of a town, called Hot Springs, Arkansas. There's a fountain there and it's visited by thousands of people because somebody told somebody and somebody told somebody else that it was the fountain of youth and everybody won't get a little sip of it. But I tell you today, there's also a fountain 
down in Augusta, Florida, Augusta, Florida, and they said that it's the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon was looking for. And people come down, and even while they sip the water, and they buy little bottles at the gift shop, they don't really believe that it's the fountain but you of youth. But I tell you today, I found the real thing. It was on a hill called Calvary. There was a fountain. It's a fountain drawn from the blood of Emmanuel's veins. And a drop of that blood will remove all of your guilt and stain on a hill called Calvary. I found a fountain that the people who know the Lord have accepted his blood and have the living water to get all their guilty stain washed away. That fountain gave me hope. That fountain gave me power. The power of the blood. That's why I say my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I shall not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. There is a fountain filled with blood flowing from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath that flood. Lose all their guilt and stain. After you get washed in the blood, you got a new song to sing. God gave me a song that the angels can't sing. I've been redeemed. I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me all again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know what? I've been through some bad times. I've been through some hard times. I've been through some sad times. But I'm still here. It wasn't no bottled water. But nothing but the blood. The blood brought me out. The blood turned me around. The blood stood me up. The blood was the blood. I know it was the blood. Mama tried to talk to me. Daddy tried to talk to me. Auntie tried to talk to me. But when I look back, I got an epiphany. I understand how I got off drugs. I understand how I got off my sinful ways. It was the blood. I know it was the blood. One day when I was lost, he hung on the cross. I don't know everything, but I know. I don't know about you, but I know it was the blood for me. I don't know how you got over, but it was the blood for me. I don't know how you got out of that situation, but for me, it was the blood. Hallelujah. Yes. I know it was the blood. Stand to your feet. 
Come on, y'all, help me sing it. I know it was the blood for me. Hallelujah. Listen, the doors of the church are open. If you don't know this Jesus that I speak of, listen, I can't put him in a bottle for you. But you got to accept him for yourself. I tell you, he'll come into your life and give you living water. Everything will change. Little by little, all that stuff that you wouldn't worry about will start to fall off. And new stuff will start to sprout up. Is there one today that wants to know this Jesus that I speak of? Listen, you might know Jesus. But you've never been a place where somebody showed him to you like they showed him to you here. This might be your place to be. Or you might have been in the church. You know, all kind of things happen in the church. Folk get on your nerves. They might have chased you away and you fell away. Well, you can still come. You can still come right now. He'll take you right back and you'll start right back where you where, where, start right back where you fell off at. Is there one today? Hallelujah. You may be seated.